Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the founder of the New York Forum, Richard Atias. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to the second edition of the New York Forum. There are more than 700 of us taking part here today, and I am especially pleased that we have over 150 journalists present, because from the very outset, I wanted the New York Forum the, to be as transparent as possible. So permit me to extend a special welcome to our friends from the press. In, thank you. In today's world, transparency has become non-negotiable. Now that everyone can be a blogger or a potential journalist. This will be an issue we tackle over the coming day, especially during our closing plenary, which will address this question of hyper-transparency and re-examine the way we operate in this new context. When I was working with my programming team and our mentors to decide on the key team that would drive this year's New York Forum, the subject, we came up with a very different set of topics, of the topics from the ones that we'll be addressing over the next two days. As I am sure many of you have experienced with the speed at which the world is moving today, it seems that it is nearly impossible to plan anything with more than a few days' notice. In this spirit, I created the New York Forum with one single approach, a conviction that is rooted in my background as an engineer. When you have a problem, you need to surround yourself with specialists, with experts, and treat it as if it were a matter of life or death. Personally, I do not believe that there is any single specialist or expert today who knows exactly when the crisis or and mini crisis that are taking place every week in all domains will end. What I do believe we can and absolutely must take care away from this is that we have now entered a new era, an era in which we must learn to live and manage in an uncertain and volatile world. Cycles of calm and turmoil are getting closer and closer together, something that is true for all areas, economic, political, or environmental events. These new shortened cycles have and will continue to change the way we live and do business. On January 1st, I was with my family in Marrakesh. I remember that New Year's dinner as if it were yesterday, and were surrounded by friends from all over the Middle East. No one said or acted differently, and it was business as usual. Little did we imagine that three weeks later, the Tunisian and Egyptian presidents would have fallen. Japan would experience two consecutive disasters with the tsunami and Fukushima. Osama bin Laden would finally be found and killed. Europe would return to discuss the question of Greece. Libya would be under siege from NATO. And the IMF would be decapitated, changing completely the stakes for the next presidential elections in France. I point this to these examples to show that our political leaders have much more work to do. It also proves that if we want our economy to get better, we need to help by taking our destiny in our own hands in every country. It does not apply to the United States, where partisan pre-election debate is already taking place. When I say we, I mean business leaders and entrepreneurs, those who are paid to take risks, to have vision, instinct, and be daring must incorporate a greater responsibility for the future of the economy into our collective spirit. On the key issues of job creation and providing assistance for the new and emerging democracies, we must play a leading proactive role to help them to see the light of day and especially to find their feet. The New York Forum aims to be a laboratory of ideas 
where economic policy makers from all countries, young and old, entrepreneurs and executives, can meet up mid-year to exchange and share views and suggest a way forward. It is my expectation and hope that the results of the New York Forum 2011 will be equal to the quality of its great mentors and partners, to whom I am hugely grateful, and <clears throat> of its participants, hailing from over 35 countries, who I hope will keep an open mind over the next two days and speak your minds at this startup platform we created in the middle of an international economic crisis and in New York. I will now hand the microphone over to all of you, and I suggest that we get down to the heart of the matter right away. So I would like to start by asking all of you, what do we need to do to boost jobs and consequently growth? Thank you very much.